Welcome back to another video, dear voyagers. Today let's unfold an interesting topic on how Pluto could be our potential last home. The Sun is currently a main sequence star, burning hydrogen into helium in its core. In about 5 billion years, the Sun will exhaust its hydrogen fuel and start burning helium. This will cause the Sun to expand dramatically into a red giant, making planets like Earth and Mars inhabitable. So in order to not be fried like KFC chicken, humanity should look to move further away from the Sun, and that's where Pluto comes to the topic. So how could humans travel to Pluto when Sun begins to grow? What would life on Pluto be like? Will this tiny globe be able to fit the entire Earth's population? Now let's crack it down. As the Sun ages, it will eventually exhaust its hydrogen fuel and start to expand, becoming a red giant. During this transformation, the Sun will swell to a size that engulfs the inner planets, including Earth. By that time, Earth will no longer be habitable due to the extreme heat and radiation reaching temperatures of up to 2,000 degrees Celsius. Even Mars will be cooked. But what about Jupiter and Saturn, the gas giants in our solar system? Due to their larger distance from the Sun and their composition, these gas giants are expected to withstand the Sun's transformation into a red giant. Jupiter and Saturn may experience some effects, such as increased temperatures and changes in their orbits, but they are not expected to be engulfed by the expanding Sun. Due to the extreme temperatures, the ice particles in Saturn's rings will begin to melt and evaporate, causing them to disintegrate and disperse into space. But we cannot live on gas giants due to lack of solid surface and extreme radiation. But what about their moons? Moons like Europa, Enceladus, and Titan will experience significant changes in their environments. But the question arises, will these moons be habitable for some time before the sun fully grows? There is a possibility that subsurface oceans on moons like Europa and Enceladus could provide a refuge for life. These subsurface oceans may shield any potential life forms from the harsh conditions on the surface, offering a glimmer of hope for habitability. Currently, the temperature of these moons are below freezing, but for a few thousands of years as the sun expands, the average temperature could be pleasant for a while. However, the exact duration of habitability on these moons during the sun's transition remains uncertain, but as the Pluto trip can take up to a decade, maybe we can stop by these moons to refuel ourselves. These moons offer unique opportunities to study different types of habitable environments. By exploring them, we can understand more about the conditions necessary for life and the variety of habitable zones in Pluto. These moons could potentially offer resources such as water ice, which can be used for drinking water, oxygen production, and fuel through electrolysis. This could support sustained human presence in deep space. Establishing bases or research stations on these moons could serve as waypoints or refueling stations for future missions deeper into the solar system. This can make the logistics of space travel more manageable and efficient. However, humanity should already start preparing way before sun expands and set up bases on these moons. Anyways, we can't stay here for long as the temperatures can soar up to 400 degrees or more. So by this time it's better that we move to Pluto, our last hope. Pluto, classified as a dwarf planet, has a diameter of about 2,377 kilometers or 1,477 miles, and is composed primarily of ice and rock. It follows a highly elliptical and inclined orbit, with an average distance of 5.9 billion kilometers, or 39.5 astronomical units. This means Pluto is roughly 39 times farther from the Sun than Earth. Pluto's weather is characterized by extremely cold temperatures, reaching up to minus 240 degrees Celsius. Its surface is covered in nitrogen ice, and it experiences extreme seasonal changes due to its tilt and elliptical orbit, resulting in one hemisphere enduring decades of darkness, while the other experiences continuous daylight. Pluto has a thin atmosphere composed mostly of nitrogen, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. But when Sun starts to eat up other planets, what will be the temperature of Pluto? Well, it depends but there is an estimate that the temperatures could be around 10 to 30 degrees Celsius, which can absolutely support life. The surface gravity on Pluto is about roughly 6.4% of Earth's gravity. For example, 
a person weighing 100 kilos on Earth would weigh about 6.4 on Pluto. So don't worry if you're overweight. Now let's see how living on Pluto will be different from Earth. The thin atmosphere on Pluto will offer little protection from the intense radiation and heat emanating from the red giant sun, posing significant challenges for any potential inhabitants. So it would be recommended for us to stay under special structures or buildings to avoid radiation exposure. Building a structure on Pluto would present numerous challenges and differences compared to constructing a building on Earth due to low gravity. Materials must be chosen wisely to withstand Pluto's conditions. Insulating materials would be crucial to maintain habitable temperatures inside the building. The lower gravity would require different approaches to building foundations and ensuring stability. Structures might need to be anchored more securely to prevent them from shifting or becoming unbalanced. Energy sources would need to be reliable and capable of functioning on Pluto. Solar power would be less effective due to the distance from the sun, so alternative energy sources such as nuclear power might be necessary. During the journey to Pluto, the spacecraft must be designed with advanced life support systems, as well as robust radiation protection to shield passengers from cosmic rays and solar flares, and transporting these many people would require tons of resources. Since Pluto is just the size of Australia, living in confined spaces would be the best option. Efficient use of space is essential. Life support systems must include closed-loop air and water recycling technologies similar to those used on the International Space Station. Growing food in small, controlled environments using hydroponic or aquaponic systems would provide fresh vegetables and fish. Social interaction and community activities are vital to maintain morale and access to mental health professionals and recreational activities would help reduce stress and prevent psychological issues. Renewable energy sources on Pluto would include highly efficient solar panels and energy storage systems, although solar power is much weaker due to the vast distance from the sun. Nuclear power, through radioisotope thermoelectric generators or small modular reactors, would provide reliable and long-term power with minimal maintenance. If Pluto has geothermal activity, this energy could be harnessed to provide heat and power. Securing natural resources on Pluto would be challenging. Pluto's surface contains water ice, which can be melted for drinking water, electrolyzed to produce oxygen and hydrogen, and used for various other purposes. Nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide ice can be processed for life support systems and as chemical feedstocks. Sustainable practices such as stringent recycling and reuse protocols would be essential to minimize waste and maximize the reuse of materials. But after all these, we cannot rely on Pluto to support us forever. Pluto's potential habitability is limited by the sun's evolution into a red giant star, which will significantly increase its temperature in the distant future. While Pluto could be considered marginally habitable for a period of thousands to perhaps a million or two years, this time frame is relatively short in astronomical terms. As the Sun exhausts its hydrogen fuel and transitions into a red giant phase, it will increase in size and luminosity, drastically altering conditions in the outer solar system. To sustain the long-term survival and continuation of humanity beyond the limited habitable period of Pluto, humans would need to venture beyond the solar system. This exploration would involve searching for habitable exoplanets that could support human life. The journey to find and potentially colonize these exoplanets would require advanced space exploration technologies, sustainable living systems, and possibly even generation ships capable of supporting human populations over vast interstellar distances. In essence, Pluto might offer a brief window of potential habitability, and this time must be utilized to prepare ourselves for a long voyage. This journey represents a significant scientific and technological challenge, but is seen as essential for the long-term survival and continuation of the human species. We hope you liked the video, so do make sure to subscribe and smash the like button to help us grow more. So that's it for today. Cosmic Explorers signing off.